Hello everyone, this is Kieran from Keys Minutes and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to take a look at Ox Skin. This is kind of a bit of a combination video. I've used some uh, recipes from some of my favourite videos that I learnt from. I'll definitely shout out Infernal Push, Dave Perriman uh, for his excellent Ox Skin tutorial which really helped me understand lighter skin tones. I tend to do everything in more muted tones. So starting with a zenithal highlight using a mixture of Lauren Forest and Avalon Sunset 50-50 mix. So it's kind of a bit of a yellowy green. Uh, no, and just working over your cherry. I'm working on thin glazing layers. So it's probably going to take roughly around four to five co to get a decent base coverage. Just take your time with it. Uh, this is like the third or fourth layer and you can see it's starting to really uh, cover quite well bit too wet on the brush there so excess and you can notice I'm trying to work in one smooth motion as much as possible um, just downward strokes or sideward strokes whichever area I've, I've got to point point in as much as possible it just makes it easier and gives you a clearer um, and softer a softer finish really uh, with your paints with each layer allow it to with the glazing layers or really thin layers really make sure you allow it to dry before you move on to the next one because that will give you the smooth finish you want in the end <clears throat> and here's after a good base coat of around four or five layers still a little bit wet under there but hey usually i paint two or three of these together now i'm going to use a mixture of uh, the base mix what we've just done and uh, art contrast and what i'm going to do is do a kind of soft shade area so working from like the where the muscle starts to go into like the folds there or into the creases of the the skin um, I'm going to work from kind of a thick layer down in towards that crease or that shadowed area and and work from yeah and just work a nice thing and just work a nice kind of transition from that area so it creates a nice dark dark shadow it's a little soft at first and this is where Dave Perriman come in and show um, on his excellent video and showed how to do that and I'll try and link in the video but it just it just gives the tones such a nice um, transition to the shadow and a nice contrast in the, in the skin tones in general once you've done. And then moving on I'm just going to do the same thing but use uh, a little bit more of a, it's kind of the same layer but I'm going to just work it more deeper into the shadows so I get a higher, a higher light point that allows you to build a couple of layers up then and it, it just makes the contrast a little bit stronger then using pure art flesh I'm going to go and hit still fairly thick but more in towards the points where possible and I'm just going to try and it and I apologize that my fat hands getting in the way of the camera here but I'm working really in the the I'm working I apologize about my fat hand getting in the way there but I'm working kind of in where the folds are a little bit more still a little bit thicker because I'm gonna do a deeper shade later on I actually normally do the deep shade before I move on I just didn't for some reason on this one and completely forgot about it and started highlighting so it's just one of those things uh, you can take each stage as it is but I'm gonna try and everything's timestamped as best possible so you can use some of the sections how you want you don't have to do as many highlights as I do to get consistency and that's an important thing as a painter to remember no matter what I show you this is just my technique so try and find your own ways to do things as well as much as possible so I work around the knuckles as well I didn't really show that it just because it's kind of difficult but any kind of folds and creases you can see try and work in uh, this is the easiest bit to catch on camera I'm still trying to figure out the best way to film certainly faces and some elements because uh, when I have the camera in this position and I'm kind of painting around the camera it's a little bit difficult but I'll get there I really enjoy painting orc flesh in general I just think it's or goblin flesh or uruk flesh whichever ways you want to call them in Age of Sigma I just think there's so much variation you can play with just like normal skin tones as well I like to mix them up and this is like the soft and medium shade and it just I find it just really adds a nice little pop 
pop to the to the skin especially as you start to highlight up later on and you have that deep shading as well So now it's using Elysian Green with the base mix again, I'm going to mix it to a 50-50 with Elysian Green and I'm just going to start highlighting on the upper areas of the muscles, um, kind of where the light will hit but not fully because you want to have a kind of soft gradient and a blend as well from where the muscle is. So as I'm highlighting, so it's just working in a smaller area than what the base mix would be. Um, it, I find that you can spend a lot more time if you want uh, in between each layer of highlighting and really blend these layers in with to soft transitions but uh, to give this uh, the transitions a lot smoother effect but I find you can get nice if you're just going for like for, for competition models that's kind of things I'd spend time in spend a bit more time wet blending or glazing in to do things but if you're just going for a nice looking model and you want to like say if this was a character and you want him to look good uh, again you, your painting ability might not be competition standard um, but you want him to look really good then I still find you can get nice uh, transitions from the paint uh, from the highlights as well if you just do it in in layers kind of the classic GW way with layers but by, t by doing it with glazes I think you can you've got more room or think really thin paints you've got more room to work with and you can adjust more and again this is it after that first stage of highlight this video is a bit longer because it is quite a quite a meaty kind of thing to do. It took me around four or five hours to paint this model in full. So with Elysium Green again, we're just going to work in a smaller area again, taking our time around the lips, mouth, wherever we are, to try and really pick out those moments where those those focus points you want to to draw people's attention to with this model. Um, certainly on, on on the skin tones. Um, I, like I said, any kind of way you, you go around filming this, just take your time. Uh, any time, sorry, any type of way you go around um, painting this is, is time, really. It, allowing each layer, usually I'll paint three or four of these models together, so one's drying and I can then move on to the next one. And it it's a slower process in that sense than painting one individually because you're doing more and it'll take a bit longer, but it allows you then that each layer is fully dry before you do it. When I was trying to film this, uh, that's probably what took me most time is allowing each layer to fully dry um, or having to move the camera out and work on another model at the same time just so I could allow the layers to dry properly. But yeah, just as working on each, each highlight, working a smaller area, higher towards the lights and the shadows, take your time, and if ever you go wrong with a bit, just go back to the previous mix and, and kind of, you can blend it in a little bit more. And like I said, you can work a lot better. On each part, I try and show you what it looks like. Right now, on camera, it's, it's not really looking much different. You can just see things are slowly coming together and there's highlights slowly being picked, picked out on the model. So I'm gonna use Auric Flesh. Normally I can do, if I'm going for a really light color as well, I would have done the complete, a complete different base mix to start with, but kind of the same thing using a, a yellow tone in it. But with this one as well, uh, I like to use a bit of, this is a really pale green kind of look, this orange flesh, and I just thought for this model, or the look I was going for, it looked really good. Um, you could use Ogwin Camo if you're using a different undertone as well. I find that gives you a nice finish as well. You could use Oric Flesh and then do a Ogren Camo thing again. But again, we're just working now really small point of brush, taking my time, not having too much paint loaded on the brush and just trying to draw in kind of, not full edge highlights at the minute, but draw in sections to, to really up that contrast level. 
again just we're going to take time in this video i'm not going to cover teeth and bones and eyes because like i said i was really struggling as you can see as i'm, I'm i zoom in here uh, trying to bring the model closer to show you around working on the face and the cheekbones and everything um i kind of get myself lost a little bit on the camera but um, for bones, I did a bone tutorial recently, so for teeth it's kind of a similar method I would use in general to that. Uh, a little bit less depending on what I'm trying to achieve, uh, depending on what type of model it is as well. If it was a character I'd probably go more towards how I do the bone uh, and take my time a little bit more with it. Um, but yeah, if you want to check that one out that'll give you a, a good look at how I tend to do my, my bone and teeth really. A lot of good fun with these models, these beast snaggers, they have some nice leather parts as well so check back on the last tutorial on leather if you want to know how I did some of that area uh, as you see the model later on and as you saw it at the start. But working around the knuckles as well, it, I found this bit hard to, sh uh, to show so this is just, it's just show you, just working on a smaller area. Um, kind of where the knuckles bend and then trying to look for areas where the shadows are, where the, the you know there's that little dip that that takes a little bit of time to just work out sometimes and just around the muscles top i'm working more towards the top of the muscles with this i did the xenophil highlight to kind of give me an idea of where the shadows would be but i probably went a little heavy on the highlight on the xenophil so pure at first same same process now just going to work in really small areas um, this is kind of the final highlight stage of this skin tone that I'm going before I kind of move on to uh, edge highlight on the next stage. But this gives me now, I'm, I'm getting that, that final kind of green starting to come through. It's a little bit lighter, it's not as light as, um, it's not as light as the, oh I'm trying to think, what well, I completely lost my train, train, train of thought then, see? It's not as light as kind of the um, the heavy metal style painting. Uh, if you want to, again, Dave Perriman's Infernal Brushes, he does a brilliant tutorial on how the heavy metal team do do art flesh, uh, and it is quite a really bright tone. Um, I kind of like the muted tones because I've already done some beast snaggers in a little bit of a mute, really muted tone. In I did a, a video on. Uh, um, how I do a muted tone or flesh tone previously uh, but I wanted to kind of change it a little bit but still have that muted look so they kind of would still look even though these ones are better this one's better painted it still fit with that unit of models it would still look like he's a part of them he's still got that base color of the Lauren forest that kind of draws it in and, and keeps it together and just taking my time around the knuckles again uh, and really just edge points now on, on these not a full edge highlight but right to the top and this is probably the slowest process is taking some of these highlights and just when you get to this each part didn't take long probably five or six minutes each each bit a little bit longer sometimes if I was working on really small bits um, but then when you want to really get into the details, you just want to take that extra bit of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it might take. If you're painting competition stands, it's going to take you hours. <laughs> That's how it is. It'll take you a lot longer. Final highlight, I'm adding some Ushanti bone into that Uruk flesh. And it's kind of, it's not an edge highlight as such, but kind of drawing the highlight in. As you can see, I'm drawing to the upper part of like this abdominal muscle here and, and just trying to draw it in and sketch it in. With this bit I did have, while I was filming some of it, you'll, you'll see it as I show it as on, on the spin round, I, I kind of did go a bit too bright with some of the Ushanti and if that's the case of what you do is just go back to a previous mix um, to to the Oric Flesh mix and just tone it down a little bit or even back to even the base mix just to tone things down a little bit you can do that as well with a really thin kind of almost wash kind of colour take time around the nose and uh, above the upper eyes just to uh, hit that final point 
and just here on the knuckles again. You can see it kind of where I'm painting here, it's just really thin, just really drawing out the line, trying to make that muscle pop a little bit more. So now we're going to work on the fleshy areas. So using a mix of corn red and Kisler flesh, I'm going to work, I've highlighted the mouth and, and you don't have to do that, but I just find it gives you a little bit of extra coverage. When I was doing the greens, I found it give it a little bit extra coverage and I didn't know whether I was going to do the top lips as well. But I do like to do them sometimes where I do down from the nose, a little bit on the ears and a little bit around the bottom of the mouth and just a little bit under. Obviously this Beast Snagger has got quite a few scars as well so I'd, I'd use the same process on the scars with this model. So really thin highlight because it's kind of a really, corn red in itself can be a, a really strong looking red at times. Um, it's not it's not a bright red but it, it can look strong on the model especially over greens. So really thin layers, glaze layers, consistency on this. Um, I only did one layer of the corn red, this mixture, but if you want to really make that, that mixture pop a little bit more, you can do two or three layers as well. Um, working the knuckles now as well, because I, I like to add a bit of fleshy colour there as well, because I just think it gives it a nice coverage. And on the elbows, uh, obviously if the Oryx got a knee, knee area out as well, um, this one, this Orc hasn't in particular, so I wouldn't need to do it but around the knees as well some people like to I, I think I did his nipples as well but you don't have to um, some people also like to have a bit of color into the abdominal 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 area as well you can do and um, when I did these scars all I did um, for the inside color is pure corn red but you can change it if you want you can go with a dumbbell brown as well to make it look a little bit richer and darker in that area more dried blood so now 50-50 uh, of that mix and again I'm just taking my time pointing the highlights now a really small area on the the flesh it really starts to pop at this point um, but I would take it one step further where I go to a pure consistency which would be up in a bit uh, not a pure Kislev kind of a seven the opposite sorry 70-30 but you can work what I find with this as well is obviously I'm using more of a corn richer red but I also find using a if you want a really pale looking flesh mixture of Cadian flesh and Kislev flesh would work really well so I've gone for the red kind of like almost saw kind of look which is great for the scars but even around the mouth maybe he's I, I don't know he's chapped his lips up whatever <laughs> so he's got a bit of a more of a saw mouth look but I just I like that depth it just brings a little bit more out on the model and it, it's all your preference I've also worked in blues at times on the mouths because I think orcs are so fun you can play around with different colors so you, you, you've got a lot of variety you can do with orcs uh, in general so here you can see I'm just working on the nipple areas just a point highlight on that point really is it's its highest point but it's up to you which details you want to add in I've seen people use like a fleshy tone all across like the muscle area on the front on the chest and the abdominals and it, it can look really good um, I tend to also use it on the inside of the palms a little bit as well on the hands you can't really see it as much on these ones because of the, the way it's holding its weapons but there's some that might have more of an open palm view or maybe pointing or whatever and I just think it adds like on Bayard's Revenge one model I painted is his hands are open and I just think it adds a nice bit of texture to show a bit of fleshy areas there as well. And this is it. The f and then we get onto one final highlight with this which is a 30-70 uh, mixture. Um, and this is just the final stage really, just a, a pure point highlight right on the lips. Um, I didn't do in the ears, but sometimes I tend to do like the ears this a more of a richer red first, pure corn red and then, then work up. Um but I did, I just kept them quite quite light in this instance. Um work around the scars again, you've got nice areas of scars. I haven't shown the eye process for this, but usually 
when I'm working, I, I really, I tried to, but I really struggled getting it to hit it. But what I like personally on my eyes is with orcs, I like to use a corn red as a background color, uh, maybe a sun, evil sun scarlet as a more on the um, on the eye eye lens. Uh, I, I don't know what to call it. It's not the pupil, but more on the eye itself. I'll use then a, a corn. Um, a Kislev, sorry, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then maybe an orange or a yellow for the for the pupil. But yeah, just take your time with these points and picking out like the scars. You can the, the models are so detailed. You can see nice little bits where you can hit like highlights to get get things uh, to make make those um, those bits pop really much. You know, and if you want to use a pure Kislev fast um, colour as well, you could go in as a final touch up on that. And this is a bit where I normally do this earlier on with Kole, Kole, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Kole, a green shade. This is kind of to add in a deep shade into that muscle area. It's a really fine point right in that, that those kind of tucks. And it just again just adds that little bit more extra contrast to the model really makes the shadows pop you could use dark tones like a, um, a stegger and stale green could work well as well as just a, a pure one if you don't have uh, the, the, the shade color I, i'd definitely recommend stegger and stale green or kislev um, not kislev incubi darkness might work well as well um because it's kind of that greeny blue color that will just add a really dark but dark color i think i see a lot of people use nice reds in the in the shadows as well so maybe explore using some corn reds in the shadows in future i'll try and look at that and here he is the finished model uh quite happy a little bit above the tabletop standard but that's kind of how i paint anyway in general but you could remove any of these points and just take your time with it and uh, create a standard that you want to and thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this one please leave a like comment share subscribe and i'll be back soon hopefully with a dark angels video i'm probably going to do a a recipe on a dark angels i'm going to try and do them every two weeks where possible sometimes more when i can but every two weeks roughly i'll be back thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon